Hey everyone, CPAP Gentleman here, and today we'll be talking about sleep apnea. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Now for those of you watching this video, you're probably hearing about the term sleep apnea for the very first time. Maybe you've been to your sleep specialist, or maybe you've heard about it through friends or family. Now, whatever your reason may be, I'll be going through everything you need to know about the condition. From what it is, to how you get it, to how you know you have it, and most importantly, how to treat it. Now, let us traverse into the meaning of what sleep apnea actually is. <clears throat> the word apnea originates from ancient Greece. The A in front of the word means not, and the pnea means blow or breathe. Not breathe. So if you look at the two words together, they essentially mean to not breathe during your sleep. And there's a couple of reasons why this may happen, which give branch to two types of sleep apnea. Central sleep apnea involves an actual disconnect between the brain and the muscles of the lung responsible for your breathing. And it's through this disconnect where you lose the effort to breathe during your sleep. Obstructive sleep apnea, on the other hand, is a physical blockage that closes off the upper airway. And although you have the effort to breathe, this blockage prevents you from doing so. People may have one, or the other, or a mixture of both. But oftentimes, obstructive sleep apnea is most commonly diagnosed. So I'll be focusing on it with a little bit more detail. Get out of here, Central! I'm always trying to be the center of attention! Obstructive sleep apnea is a result of a natural body function that occurs during our sleep, and that function is muscle relaxation. Muscle relaxation is essential for everyone, because it prevents us from acting out our dreams. But it just so happens that the pharyngeal muscles, that is to say the muscles that line the upper airway, are affected as well. And don't forget about the tongue. The tongue is also a muscle that falls backwards during our sleep, creating an even tighter space to breathe through. Now the sheer act of these muscles relaxing isn't enough to cause a complete airway obstruction. And that's why a lot of people don't have sleep apnea. But for those of us who do, there are usually multiple factors contributing to a complete blockage. Weight is just one of those contributing factors. If you think about it, all that mass is pushing up and against the airway. It's just setting you up for obstruction. So in other words, if your sleep apnea is solely weight related, it is very possible to get rid of the condition just by losing some weight. Come back here, gosh darn kids. That'll be the last baseball you throw through my window. Age is also a prevalent factor. The more we age, the more the muscles in our body relax during our sleep, which increases the likelihood of obstruction. Hey, no neck. Where, where's your neck? And sometimes it just boils straight down to genetics. Due to our anatomic structure, our airway is just smaller than most. So for those of you who haven't been diagnosed and are maybe looking to consult your family doctor, there are some key symptoms to look out for. Are you tired, drowsy, or fatigued? Your body will wake itself up several times throughout the night in the absence of breathing. In some cases, this can drastically reduce sleep quality, affecting how you feel throughout the day. Have people told you that you snore? Well, not everyone who snores has sleep apnea. Snoring in itself is indicative of a partially obstructed airway. It could be a sign that complete closure is coming soon. Morning headaches? In the absence of breathing, not only is our ability to take in oxygen inhibited, but our ability to expel carbon dioxide, a waste product of breathing, is also limited. A buildup of carbon dioxide dilates the blood vessels within the brain, causing an increase in cranial pressure. Could you be possibly forgetting things? It just so happens that during our sleep, our brain is actively processing data from the day and forming new memories. Without good quality sleep, our brain's ability to do this is suppressed. Now you may be experiencing just one of these symptoms, or perhaps you're experiencing them all. Either way, we'll be covering the gold standard treatment, and it's called CPAP therapy. CPAP is an acronym. It stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, and it's that positive airway pressure that keeps your airway open during your sleep. The air pressure is generated by a machine, typically small enough to fit on your night table, and it's comprised of two components. Think of the first part of the machine as a compressor. It sucks air from the room into a small space, which creates a certain amount of pressure. And it's this amount of pressure that's often prescribed by your physician. The second part of the machine is essentially a humidifier. The pressurized air passes over water, picks up moisture, travels through a tube into a mask, and eventually goes down your airway. For those of you with obstructive sleep apnea, you're still in full control of your breathing. Yes! The machine just helps your airway from being closed off. 
allowing you to normally breathe as you would while you're awake. And that concludes this video. I really thank you guys for watching, and if you liked it, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, CPAP Gentlemen, out. Thank you.